Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. We are going to be painting a bouquet of primroses and violets. The card that I used to paint it on is a Strathmore watercolor card, 140 pound cold pressed paper, five inches by six and seven eighth inches. For this painting, I started off with a light pencil drawing the pencil drawing was just a little bit too dark for the watercolor, so I made sure to lighten it up with my kneaded eraser before adding the color. For the watercolors today, I'm using the Rosa Gallery Botanical 28 colors that I recently acquired and I am just loving them. The first color that I'm using is the Magenta Rose uh, PR122 and I'm first outlining the heart-shaped primrose petals uh, one flower at a time and after I do a darker outline then I rinse some of the color off of my brush and go in with a more watered down wash of the color to bring in some of the color down towards the center of the petal but not or the center of the flower but not have it all the same um, darkness. I wanted the petals to have that darker outline and then towards the central center to lighten up to leave a white in the center as the primroses that I was using for inspiration. Uh, there are many many different types of primroses but this particular primrose had a very beautiful pink heart-shaped petal with um, yellow in the center and a little bit of white around that yellow. Here you can see I'm working directly from my uh, ceramic palette. I put some of the paint from the pan or the paint right into the ceramic palette, add some water to it, and then I can go back right to that ceramic dish or ceramic palette instead of directly into the paint so I can have a bit of a watered down version of that color and not have to worry as much about how much water that I have on my brush. So here again, I'm outlining the petals in the watered down uh, magenta rose and then rinsing off my brush a bit, dabbing it on paper towel, and then um, having a bit of a, a lighter hue of that color going towards the center of the flower. And I do each of these each of these primroses the same way with outlining the petals first with a magenta rose and then rinsing off a lot of the uh, paint that I have on my brush so it's more more water on the brush less pigment and having it um, go lighter and lighter as I go towards uh, the base of the petals or the center of the flower. So I've sped up the next portion quite a bit so that you don't have to watch in real time as I paint each particular flower as they are all done the same way. Just the outline with the thicker paint or more pigment around the edges of the petals and then rinsing the brush off. Um, not all the way but rinsing a lot of the paint out dabbing it on a paper towel to control the amount of water that I'm putting on or putting into the flower and then having the lighter wash um, get lighter and lighter as you go towards the center of the flowers. On a few of them I also go back and I add more of the magenta rose towards the outside of the flower to give it more interest so they're not all exactly the same value. For the first violet, I'm using a color, it's just called Violet on the Rosa Gallery Botanical 20 colors, but it's the PV23, and it is a very dark purple. Um, it is difficult to lift back up, so you might want to start with a very light wash at first, lighter than you see here. But the shape of the violet's petals are almost like a little heart or maybe bunny ears on the top, the two petals, and then another same size petal, a large one in the center, 
on the bottom with two little petals, one on each side of that large center bottom petal. So it's like bunny ears at the top or a heart at the top and then one matching in size larger petal on the bottom with two little petals, one on each side of it. And I left the center of this violet um, empty so that I can put a little bit of yellow in later on. For the next violet, I'm using the quinacridone violet. It's a bit of a, a lighter uh, hue. It's <clears throat> maybe a little bit more red as well, where the first violet is a more of a blue violet and the second violet is more of a, a redder violet. Again, you might want to start with a lighter wash at first because it is very difficult to pick up. It's a pretty staining color. But you'll again start with the two petals on the top, almost like a heart or bunny ears, and then one in the center on the bottom, and then two smaller ones on either side. And you can leave a space between the top and the bottom, and then go back in and put just a little line, one on either side to connect them if you want to. Um, I'm going back in and charging the color a little bit with some of that magenta as I love the play between the magenta rose color and the violets. I just think they look so beautiful mixing in uh, wet on wet together. If you're not working with the same color palette, you can use any violets, any pinks. They don't have to match in order for this painting to work. So I'm charging my violet color with even more of that magenta rose. I just, um, I just love it. And then some more of the, um, adding some more of that quinacridone violet to it as well. I just think the way they interplay together, the way they mix wet on wet is so much fun to see in these tiny little flowers. The top petals went a little bit too heavy with the color at first, so I'm soaking up some of that color, and you can do that by drying off your brush and using it almost like a sponge. It won't be completely dry, but wiping it on your paper towel and then putting it back into your uh, paint and it soaks it up, and then you can wipe it back on your paper towel or your cloth. You can use a, a cotton rag or a cotton cloth for this. It doesn't need to be something disposable. It can be something that you use from painting to painting. So I've sped up the next violets as they're all done the same way with the little heart shape or bunny ears on the top, the one large lower petal that matches those in size, and then the two little petals on either side. I go back and forth between the Violet PV23, the quinacridone violet PV19, PB15, and then um, I also start off a couple of the violets with the magenta rose and then add in the violet quinacridone violet or the PV23 violet um, after starting off with the magenta rose. As I'm doing with this bud here, I start with the magenta rose and then I add in the violet color while it's still very wet. The one on the top, I believe I'm using the, a very watered down violet, just the regular violet, the PV23, more of that blue tone violet. And again, it's very watered down at first and then I add just a little bit of that magenta rose into it. I just, again, I just love that combination. <laughs> So for the interior of the primroses, I am using the cadmium yellow light and putting just little dots um, in each petal area. I did use a little too much at first, so I went back in with a paper towel and you can do this with a uh, cotton cloth and just soak it right back up so you have just a little uh, light violet or light yellow left and it's not as dark. For the leaves, I have a combination of the emerald green and the burnt sienna. I'm using that using that color a lot lately. I just really like that. Um, it's not a cool green. It's a, a warmer green, and um, to me, it just it looked just like the pictures, the violets that I saw, those heart-shaped leaves, which I love that. For February, 
The flowers that represent it being violets and the primroses, they all have these heart shapes in them. The primroses, each leaf or each petal rather, it looks like a heart. And then for the violets, they have those heart shaped leaves that I just think are adorable. For the primroses, I have a lot of that negative space that I'm filling in, um, or the space that's just kind of empty space in between the uh, whole primroses that we've already painted in and where their stems are going to be um, coming up into their bouquet. So I'm adding a few more petals and I'm adding that in a bit of a darker magenta rose. just to make it look like a fuller bouquet. So there are is less room for stems and uh, more petals. And then it also gives it more depth using that deeper, um, deeper value magenta rose so that the bouquet is not all the same shade of pink so that it looks a little more three-dimensional and it gives it a little more interest. For the very tippy top violet, that little bud, I'm putting in a stem with an arch to it as when I was looking up um, wild violets, I really fell in love with that shape of the unfurling buds where you have that arch in the stem before it opens up fully. So I wanted to represent that in this bouquet. I just think it adds a little bit of whimsy, a little bit of fun to the bouquet. And for that green, for that little stem, I'm using the same green as I'm using for the other leaves, which is a combination of the emerald green and the burnt sienna. The burnt sienna is just like a, a reddish brown and the emerald green is a cooler green, but the mix of them together makes that deep, warmer um, green that to me looks just like the photos of the violets that I found online. For the primroses, their leaves, they look more like a sword shape, which is to me an interesting combination with the heart-shaped leaves of the violets and then the sword-shaped thin skinny long leaves of the primrose flower. For a bit of a darker shade or a darker value of green, I add in a little bit of ultramarine to the green I have already mixed to give a little bit more interest, a little bit more shadow to some of the leaves, a bit of a darker value. I hadn't practiced this painting exactly before I did it, and I'm also not working from a photograph, I'm working from my imagination. So some of this um, is just uh, me trying to figure out what, what would look best as I go. So for the stem area, I wasn't sure how shadowy to make it at first, or how many stems that I should represent, or how clear the representation should be. So I started off as a, with it looking a bit more airy, a bit more of that white paper showing through in the space with the stems, and you can leave it like that. I think that it looks nice like that, but in the end I, end, I ended up using more paint in that area to give it more of a thicker, fuller look where maybe there was more shadow in that area and more stems all close together so it would be harder to pick out one stem from an, another. Um, so I, I added more green to that area and um, a bigger swath or bigger area of green so that it's harder to differentiate each little stem one from another. It gives it a little bit more of a 
free, free flowing feel. Um, and you can still see the stems individually on the bottom, especially as they come out, but it's a little bit more difficult to see them each individually right underneath the petals. For the stems as they come out of the bouquet underneath where they are tied, I find if I rest my hand on the table and just move my wrist, I have straighter lines. So if you have a hard time making those straight lines, that's something that you can try. Another thing that I like to do is use my pinky as a kickstand. So I'll put my pinky down on the table and just move my wrist or I will put my whole hand down on the table and just move my wrist up and down for those straight lines. If your hand's a bit shaky or if you have a hard time with it, even with those techniques, um, feel free to use a ruler and put the ruler down and uh, move the paintbrush up the side of the ruler. I think that would work well for this too. You don't have to freehand those, um, those lines. At this point in the painting, I'm making sure I have enough little bits of leaves that they're uh, the right value, not too dark, not too light, adding in little stems, just the little details. I am varying the leaves values. So some are lighter and some are darker to give the bouquet a little bit of added interest and to make it look a little bit more uh, natural. The next step for this painting is going to be the twine, the twine wrap, the twine tie. And for this, I have a combination of the burnt sienna and the green that I used, which made a nice, um, a nice muted brown. You can use whatever brown or tan that you think will look nice. It just happens to be the one, the combination that I used. So it was a a warm, almost reddish brown mixed with a green, which gave it the, the brown that I'm using in the painting. Um, I did go a bit too heavy at first, so I soaked it right back up with a paper towel. And now I'm going over it again, making sure to leave some of that white paper um, on there so that it looks like the highlights as if the sunlight would be hitting it. You would see it look uh, more three-dimensional with the shadow on the left side and the light coming in towards the right side. And also a bit of the darker shadow on the top of it as I think um, the bouquet would leave a little bit of shadow on it as well. And then for the darker area in the stems, I'm going back into it with some of the violet um, and then going back into the twine also with the violet to give it a even darker shadow area. So I'm just um, getting a tiny bit of that violet on the tip of my brush and dabbing it in carefully and then um, a very watered down version on the stems. I put just a little bit on the part of the twine that is um, flowing down from the bouquet as well. Once I am happy with the amount of shadows that I put in the bouquet and it seems complete to me, I take my kneaded eraser and clean up any extra pencil marks. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've really enjoyed this painting. The card is ready to go in the mail and um, I hope that you get a chance to try it out. I will have the image of the bouquet, the drawing, or at least a uh, like a grayscale version of it that you can print and then trace and um, use to make your own 
uh, your own painting with that as well. The card is ready to get in the mail and I'm going to be doing a bookmark with the same motif coming up in a video. I hope that you will join me for that as well. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.